Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at a 50 amp solar charge controller from Vivor. Now if you don't know who Vivor is, they are a company known for providing a wide range of products across various different categories. They cater for consumer and business and are known for focusing on customer satisfaction, something a lot more companies should do likewise. In this video we'll look at the physical hardware, construction quality and features. Then we'll install via the supported mobile application using Bluetooth, configure the solar charge controller, then look at what features the app includes. Then we'll put the solar charge controller up against the alleged best in market to see how it performs. We'll round up with a conclusion as to if you should consider the Vivor 50 amp solar charge controller, skip it or buy it. So let's check the weather forecast and hope for clear skies. The Vivor 50 amp solar charge controller is a weighty piece of kit, weighing in at a reassuring 1.33 kilograms and measuring 183 millimeters long and 125 millimeters wide by 70 millimeters tall. The unit is very similar to a blue unit that most of you would already know and probably came out of the same factory. Mention no names. On top, you have four screws for the connector block that offer ease of access with quality screw connections. Note the lack of the load connection here, which seems to be common in this type of solar charge controller. Also note that the negative terminals are adjacent and clearly marked, which I assume is a safety feature. And although not explicitly mentioned, these should be able to handle 6AWG cable that's rated for 50 amps for this controller. To the right of the screw connections are three LEDs for solar, battery and battery set. These can display information about the solar PV array, the battery status and the battery type, all of which are displayed on the side of the unit for easy reference. The only configuration that can be physically done on the device is to set the battery type, which can be set with the included tool and a small pinhole at the front of the unit. Although I would suggest avoiding this and using the mobile application to set up the device, which we'll cover later in the video. To the right of the wire connections are sockets for a temperature probe, a COM port and a recess set button. Under the unit is a substantial heat sink to help dissipate the heat buildup from the voltage conversion. And to the sides of the heat sink are four screw holes for service mounting. Configuring with the mobile app is super simple, but only when you know which app you are installing, which is not straightforward as there is no Vivor app to control the solar charge controller. Instead, scan the QR code in the manual, also on screen, with your mobile phone. You'll be directed to an app called Solar App. Download this by pressing Get. Open the app. Optionally allow the app to track your location. Now press Add Now. Make sure that your solar charge controller is wired into your battery, but not to your solar array. Your solar charge controller will show up. Press Add. The app will connect and add your solar charge controller. It will show you the battery voltage and the temperature, which will be for the unit itself as it doesn't have a temperature probe attached. It will also show that no current is flowing to the battery and the battery is shown as status of normal. All the solar array values are zero as we have not connected the solar array yet. Now, if you have not set the battery type using the pin, now is the time to set it with the app. Press the cog in the top right hand corner. Out of the box, the battery will be set to auto recognition. As such, you can leave this alone or change to 12 or 24 volts if you only intend to use it with that battery type. The battery type can be set to various different types of lead acid or lithium. These will come with their own presets for various different characteristics of the battery. Alternatively, if you know the battery chemistry characteristics and would like to have full control of the settings, you can select custom. Unless you know what you are doing, I would not recommend this as you could potentially cause catastrophic failure. Set accordingly and press OK. Now press the drop down for charger settings. Here you can change the charging characteristics that you would have set based on your battery type. Some of these are greyed out unless you selected custom, in which case all characteristics are open to be modified. The app is basic but functional. The main screen shows an animated pictorial of the solar array, solar charge controller and battery with total wattage that is currently being generated. Below are sections for the solar array showing voltage, current and power and the battery showing the voltage, current and temperature. The next menu along is the history where you can see the metrics for the runtime in days, the number of full charge cycles and over discharge times, 
also the total power generation and charge amp hours. Below this, you get a table for maximum and minimum values for voltage, amps, and power over various different timeframes. In the next menu of basic information, you can rename the device, access the type and serial number, factory reset, and also upgrade the firmware version. One thing to note is that this is not an over-the-air update for the firmware and is a little more involved. But the solar industry is slowly catching up with the other smart home devices. And for those that have updated a JK BMS firmware, you will note that this is actually a little simpler. Since this is a cousin of many other 50 amp solar charge controllers on the market, although much more budget friendly, the features are very similar. You get a wide selection of pre-configured batteries or the flexibility to customize the parameters to your own requirements within the app. There is on-device temperature monitoring, plus the option for a temperature probe. It has Bluetooth connectivity for app control, allowing for a great degree of flexibility. And finally, you get an excellent electronic protection to keep both you and your equipment safe. To give you an example of the performance, I'm using a test panel that's rated for 160 watts, and I'll be running the 50 amp Vivo solar charge controller against a Victron 100 slash 20 amp solar charge controller. It's a sunny day with no clouds, so the solar output will be virtually identical, with the readings only a few minutes apart. The Vivo is on the left and the Victron will be on the right. The first thing to note is that the Victron averaged consistently 3 to 5 watts higher output than the Vivo. I thought this might be due to the potential inefficiencies due to the additional headroom of the 50 amp compared to the 20 amp of the Victron, but doing some research from Clean Energy, link in the pop-up above, this doesn't seem to be the case. Let me know in the comments if you believe this would make any difference. The other thing to note is that the Vivo locked on a maximum output within 3 to 5 seconds, where the Victron bounced around for several minutes before becoming steady. I'm not sure as to why this would be, and overall, this would not make an appreciable difference to the results. But if you know why, then let us know in the comments. Overall, the Victron was 2-3% to more efficient in the test, but it was 80 to 150 Australian more expensive to purchase. One final point to make is that the unit sold by Vivo is a rebadged version. Now you can get this cheaper from other Chinese sites. I cannot say if these are the same device, but if you purchase those, you don't get the quick shipping and good customer service, and potentially no warranty or technical support. So purchase those at your own risk. So the Viva 50 amp solar charge controller, should you consider it, skip it or buy it? Well, if you're on a budget and don't need the integration that Victron offers, then this is definitely a solar charge controller you should consider. It looks and feels like it's more expensive blue friend. And as I said, it probably comes from the same Chinese factory. It performed very well and actually has a better Bluetooth range than the Victron and at 60% of the price. So if you need a cost effective 50 amp solar charge controller, then this might well be a buy it, especially with Viva's customer service and warranty. Links in the description. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, then hit that like button, comment and share. And if you want to have access to similar material, then subscribe or maybe become a channel member and get early access to material plus other perks. And if I've helped you make a purchasing decision, then maybe a super thanks or a PayPal donation. It's really appreciated. Until the next one.